Hi, it's Anita Horan here. This is my second review, short review of some random book that I've chosen. Now, my favourite genres are memoir, heavy memoir about overcoming trauma and mystery without too much gore. They're the two favourite genres of mine. And this week I've chosen something really special and unusual. I actually listened to an audiobook that's around a hundred years old. I don't think I've ever exposed myself to writing that old before, um, not in this form of a novel. Uh, so I've been just chafing to like talk about it. I'm so excited. Uh, it's called The Green Rust by Edgar Wallace. Now, many of you will go, oh, Edgar Wallace, I know him. But, you know, I'm a complete novice and this is all new to me. So I don't know anything. Um, so let me read you just a tiny bit off the Goodreads site. Um, it says, during the 1920s and 30s, it is said that one of every four books read in England was written by Wallace. Um, and he ultimately produced 173 books and 17 plays. So that's incredible. How do I not know him until now? Please um, don't <laughs> chastise me for my lack of knowledge. I'm gaining it now. Uh, so, um, and last week, I also mentioned that I don't read blurbs because I think that they might give away some of the story. And to me, like the story is... The surprise you read a book to be surprised and learn something new and I just think it's too risky to read a full blurb in case it gives away too much of the story and takes away the surprise and this is an absolute prime example the blurb for the green rust on goodreads basically <laughs> the first sentence gives you a massive massive clue as to what the mystery is so if you read the blurb and also some of the reviews give it away. Um, it completely gives away the story. So if you're going to read or listen to this book, do not expose yourself to the blurb or to any reviews because half the guessing has already been done for you and it'll ruin the mystery. Um, and one of the reviews was like, oh, I worked out that mystery before, like halfway through the book. And I'm like, well, you probably worked it out because you read the blurb and the blurb gave you the clue. Um, and I was like pleasantly surprised because I'm very analytic and I was like examining the whole way and I was trying to work out what the mystery was and I'm so happy that I didn't work it out and when I did um, find out what it was at the end it was like oh wow what a brilliant story um, so let's just go back um, to the beginning so I found this book on audiobooks app um, now, I started, I used some credits um, and I started listening to two memoirs and actually I stopped both of them and they were both paid books and I used up all my credits and I only got halfway through each of them. Um, and then I was looking for something in the free domain. So this is actually, because of the age of it, it's copyright free and it has been um, read. I will insert. One of the other reviews also, I read the reviews after I listened to the book, um, said that at first that the narrator, they didn't really, they felt it was a bit kind of old. It almost, he almost sounds like, you know, like a 1920s radio news announcer. And so it's a little bit kind of like, oh, how do I get my head into his voice? But honestly, just give it like five minutes and he will absorb you. He's just such a wonderful narrator and I just gave myself over to him fully for the whole book and he did um, female voices and different characters and he was great at doing all the different characters as well. When you marry me you will say yes to the slick English clergyman when he asks you whether you will take this man to be your married husband to love and cherish and all that sort of thing you will say yes. I shall say no she said steadily. You will say yes he smiled. I had hoped to be able to give sufficient time to you so that I might persuade you to act sensibly. I could have employed arguments which I think would have convinced you that there are worse things than marriage with me. I cannot think of any, she replied coldly. So yeah, he was just absolutely brilliant. Um, so the story is called The Green Rust. You will notice I have green themed. 
this review. Um, so there's a few things going on. So there's a murder at the beginning and then there's a young woman and then there's a doctor and then there's a detective. They're the main characters. And something with mysteries is <laughs> two recent mysteries I read. I got to the end and I was like, who did it? I couldn't keep up with all the characters. The stories um, were too complex. The timelines were too confusing. There were way too many characters. And like hours after I finished the book, I was like, I'm not quite sure who done it. Or I know I knew the name of who who did it, but then I didn't know who they were in the character. But this book was just wonderful. It was so well written. I was able to keep up with all the characters. Um, and then as things um, became more evident and re revealed to you, I was able to keep up with the story. It was complex enough to keep you intrigued and interested and entertained, but it was not so complex that you couldn't understand what was happening. So I just thought this story was just so well written and there's a lot of oldie worldy terminology <laughs> And it was really elegant. It was so elegant. And it, the humour was so funny. It sounds funny saying funny humour. But it was. It was elegant, witty, sarcastic, dry humour. So um, I will give you some examples of that as well. Are you frightened? No, but I should welcome anything which made me oblivious to your presence. You are not exactly a pleasant companion. This is an example of the eloquent terminology. And I just thought that there are so many books now and so many mysteries that it's almost, this book is so good. I'm almost like, do we even need to write another mystery? Because this book is so darn good. The story's fantastic. The writing's fantastic. And the narration is fantastic. And so I'm going to give this totally five stars. I absolutely loved this book and I'm going to go and explore um, Edgar Wallace's other works as well and so he's obviously written a lot of novels so I'll see what other mysteries he's got going so definitely highly recommend this book and I'll insert some more um, snippets from the narrator as well if you could eliminate jealousy from the human outfit you'd have half the prison workers of England unemployed there was something else what was it what was it what was it oh I know my book <laughs> So I've written a memoir. It actually has taken me 10 years. And so the only way I could complete it and get it published was to split it into parts. I found a lot of people, they discover the first part and they think that's the whole book. And they're like, oh, that's good, but it doesn't really feel like a whole book. Well, it's because it's not. It's the introduction to the series. So Is This Me is really just an intro. Revenge of the Wilting Flower is the real body of the book so please don't stop short please take the next step because the real stuff is in revenge of the wilting flower so that's a series available as ebooks very cheap uh, on amazon and i'm also about to go into a five day lockdown to work on editing part three of the same series to try to get the whole thing complete so anyway if you like this review please and if you didn't <laughs> on the way please buy my book i hope you love it